Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maka here. Welcome to completed episode number 70. For those of you who may be new to the channel, completed is a series where I take a few minutes to talk about a game that I recently finished. I talk about the achievements and what I think about the game, as well as a whole bunch of other things. If you're interested in taking a look at the first 69 episodes, feel free to check the link in the description. So the Turing test recently came out on August 30th on the Xbox One and PC. It's a first person puzzle game and it kind of deals with the themes of like consciousness and the meaning of human intuition. Essentially you take control of this space engineer called A. Ava. She works for the International Space Agency. She's been sent to Europa and you go through this narrated story and like uncover the mysteries of Europa by solving puzzles to get through from level to level. The actual reason for the puzzles being there isn't doesn't necessarily make sense, but it kind of makes sense in the grand scheme of things. So like I said, the game came out on August 30th, which is the day I finished it because I had a review copy and started it a week earlier on August 23rd. That is a time span of one week in which I played the game for roughly six to eight hours, plus a couple of extra hours to make videos for you guys. And I would say roughly the average person will take around five to seven hours to complete the game on their own, which is the way I would highly recommend that you play it. It can, however, if you're looking to beat it more quickly and follow a full game walkthrough, be beaten in under two hours, with my full game walkthrough clocking in around an hour and 45. Over the course of the game, you'll be unlocking a total of 15 achievements, and eight of them will be completely story related for completing chapters one through seven, and then completing the game. There's also seven optional puzzles which you'll stumble upon, some of them being much harder than others, and each optional puzzle room offers its own unique achievement. I would say achievement and trophy difficulty is really not that bad. There are a few hard puzzles in the game, and you might need to reference a guide if you really, really get stuck. But for the most part, these are solvable if you just take your time and really think it out. The achievement difficulty, I would say, is only going to be a 3 out of 10. There's nothing skill intensive here, it just comes down to whether or not you can figure the puzzles out, which hopefully you should be able to with enough trial and error, and with a reference guide just in case. Next up is Fun Factor, the mini review I do in every single episode of Completed. And for this game, I'd actually give it an 8.5 and highly recommend it for anyone who enjoys puzzle games. In a lot of ways, the Turing Test is the puzzle game that I've been waiting for. It is almost like Portal without the portals, except the puzzles probably aren't as physics-based. For the most part, every puzzle only has one solution, and no puzzles have an ultimate fail state in which you would need to reset the map, so you'll always be able to retrace your steps if you screw something up, and you can if you need to restart the area. The puzzles themselves are very well created, and you'll have a lot of aha moments when you finally figure them out. For what it is, the actual puzzles and gameplay in the Turing test are great, and that's why I would recommend it, but the game is not perfect. It does have really long loading screens in between chapters, and sometimes it even has really long loading screens in between sectors. I've personally clocked 20 plus second loading screens just in between the rooms. And then the game had another small problem, which really, really, really took away from my enjoyment. And this is due to the fact that I am an inverted player. Now, there is obviously a setting that you can change whether or not you this play as an inverted side. player. However, it you only affects on you, the human, the player in the game, and it will not affect when you interact with other objects and look through their eyes, such as cameras and robots. For whatever reason, as you play the game, you will be inverted, but as soon as you switch, you won't be, and there's no setting to fix this currently on the Xbox One version. This made certain puzzles extremely difficult simply for the fact that it was hard for my brain to readjust from inverted to non-inverted back to inverted controls fast enough to be able to trigger some of the timers properly. I couldn't count the amount of times that I would accidentally stare at my own feet right after coming off of a camera because of how my brain would adjust to the non-invertedness of these cameras and then have to switch back to the invertedness of my regular controls. However, even with this problem aside, the game is very enjoyable. Like I said, the puzzles are very good, graphically is good, the audio is good, the dialogue is good, the narrative is good, the story is good. It is a great game in a lot of ways. Again, if you are a puzzle fan, 
I highly, highly recommend it. As always, I have included a Amazon purchase link if you're looking to buy Xbox currency. I'll include the link to the True Achievements game page as well as a link to the two guides that I made for this video. One of them being a 100% full game walkthrough and the other one being the solutions to the optional puzzles and where you can locate them. I've also included a link to my Twitter if you guys are so inclined. Feel free to tweet at me, subscribe. Thanks for watching the video. Like it if you found it cool. Share it with a friend. Special shout out to the gigs and Doc Cupcake on Patreon for supporting the show. And hopefully I see you guys next time. Peace.